everybody. I wanted to uh, challenge myself and to try and figure out if it's possible to actually build a NES controller that's compatible with an actual NES console. Normally in NES controllers you find a shift register. Um, those are easy to come by but uh, I thought it maybe we could understand it better by actually emulating or simulating an 8-bit shift register using a microcontroller and in this case I'm using an ESP32 and it's got a couple of buttons on the inside and some 3D printed uh, components. So before we get started, let's quickly um, go through how the actual shift register works and what the NES console is sending to our ESP32 and how we should respond to those signals. So in the old days, um, for instance in Atari, you had a couple of buttons and all those buttons were linked to a specific pin on the actual controller um, uh, connector. But in this case, this controller has got eight buttons, but we've got uh, only three wires to actually send the data on. Um, in, in total, there's actually five wires, but uh, the, the other two is just positive and negative to power the actual shift register. So the three lines that we've got is the latch line, clock line, and uh, data line. So in this case, in the ESP32, we use the latch and clock as an input because that is what's being sent from the console, but we will use the data line to actually uh, send information back to the console. So where you see A, B, select, start, up, down, left, and right, that is where we actually send um, information on the data line. And the information that I'm referring to is just a high or a low. So first, the, the NES console will send a high uh, pulse. That instructs us to take a snapshot of all the button states and then we will already send the first button state after the latch. So if you follow the red lines, you'll see that now we are sending the state of the button A. And uh, the NES console always expects the inputs in, in, in this particular order. A, B, select, start, up, down, left, right. So after we've sent the first signal, the NES console will send a clock pulse, a high clock pulse. After we receive that high clock pulse, we will then respond with a um, the, the state of the of the B button on the data line, and we will actually send that as low. Um, the NES controller sees low signals as a button press and high signals as uh, a button not being pressed. So once we've sent the B button, the NES console will again send a high pulse. We send send select. NES controller sends a high pulse. We send start then up, down, left, right, and so we carry on. And this cycle then keeps on repeating. Now, I tried to use this on a uh, Arduino Nano, and unfortunately the Nano seems to be a bit too slow to manage these um, pulses uh, coming into it. it so it, it would send a latch um, um, to capture the button states, but by the time it sends uh, another latch, after it's completely finished the, the cycle, the Arduino Nano has only read like two or three, or it skipped a couple of things. So um, it skipped a couple of pulses. So in the end, you send the wrong button in the wrong state. So, so it's not quite fast enough. And uh, we're not using a normal sketch. We're using interrupts. And even using interrupts, it wasn't fast enough. So I switched over to the ESP32, which seems to work perfectly fine. I'm not sure if the ESP8266 will work, but I have an idea it will because it's also quite a quick um, a microcontroller. So just to take you through this again, so we first receive latch, we send a button, we receive a clock pulse, we send a button, we receive a clock pulse, send a button, clock pulse, button, clock pulse, button, and so it carries on until the end. Right, so looking at the actual code, it's extremely, extremely simple uh, and it's very easy to understand. So at the top of our sketch, we just have a couple of declares. So we declare the nest data um, as pin 12, the nest clock as pin 14, and the nest latch as pin 13. Then over here, we just create a variable for each button state. These button states will be linked to a digital read. So when it reads uh, a st uh, the inputs on the ESP32, the value will be saved in this variable. Then we just have another um, integer that tells us when it's been latched. 
and we keep track of the, uh, the clock pulses uh, as they are coming in from the NES console. So in the setup we start with serial and we enable serial so this is important the, the serial part because we're using interrupts it's highly advisable not to print anything to the console once you are done with the actual code because or once you're done with debugging because printing something to the serial console um, creates a delay and that could interfere with um, it reading the clock uh, pulses accurately so we start off by putting the pin mode for NES data as an output. Remember in the, in the previous um, explanation on how the actual shift register works, uh, I said that the, uh, the NES console receives a low pulse as a button press. So that's why we are setting the data as high so that we're not pressing any buttons. So when it, if it had to send this, it will send the high pulse and the NES controller won't respond to anything. So then we start off by defining the, the pins. Um, as you saw in the initial part of this video, there were no um, input buttons. I mean, uh, re um, resistors connected to the input buttons. So therefore we use an input pull up. And uh, fortunately, it, this works in our advantage because when you do it like this, whenever you press a button, it actually pulls down the, the, the button press. So it actually pulls down the pin. So, and that allows us to use it as is. So we don't have to invert the, the actual um, pulse. Um, normally in Arduino, if you have a button, most explanations shows you how to pull the button high. So whenever we press a button, it's gonna pull that pin low. And that's perfect for us because we're gonna send that state as is. So then we have a pin mode latch, input pull up. You have to use input pull up because the pin will float. And um, I struggled with this quite a bit. Uh, everything would work, but as soon as I bring my hand close to it, it wouldn't work or it wouldn't work from the start. But at the moment I bring my hand close without even touching anything, it would uh, actually start working. And that's because the, the, there's interference and there's interference actually um, um, mess around with a floating pin. So over here we attach an interrupt to pin 13. So whenever we receive a, a high input, as you can see I specified high, whenever we receive a high input on pin 13 it will run the latched void. And then the same with the clock pulse, whenever we receive a clock pulse on pin 14 it will run the clocked void. So as you can see in the loop there's just commented out code. This is just for debugging. As I said, don't enable this when, once you're done. Um, so the, an attach interrupt is a lot more efficient than polling the actual pin the whole time. So imagine you're receiving um, something fr from the post office and you run to your gate the whole time to try and see if um, you, you received a package. That would make you very inefficient but if, if you could have the delivery guy press the doorbell and then only go look for your package, that, that's much more efficient. Um, by the way, that explanation I got from somebody else on, on YouTube and I'll link that video into the description because that's quite a good video on how um, the 8-bit shift register works. So, so as I said before, first we receive the latch. So the NES will send a latch on pin 13. The latch void gets executed. We set the is latched pin um, variable to one, and then we start reading all of the button states. And as I said before, we don't need to invert these because they will all become, so if you press button B, its value will be zero instead of one. So we, we don't have to invert that. Then when we're done, we reset the clock pulse to one or the clock count to one, and then we digital write to the nest data pin which was pin 12 and then we send the button state of, of the A button then right after that the NES controller will send clocked and then if we, then we can say if is latched then we say if the clock pulse is 1 we send the button B we already send button A right after the latch so we don't wait for a clock pulse to send the first button then thereafter it will skip all of these because these will be irrelevant 
and then the clock counts will be increased by one and the whole cycle repeats again we receive a clock pulse but this time the clock pulse will now be two so this one will be ignored and we will be sending the next button and so it carries on until it's cycled right throughout all of these now the tricky part with this is the NAS controller does not wait for us to send a clock pulse it'll send latch and then it'll send a couple of clock pulses and we have to make sure that we send the correct button within that time frame so it's, it's running at a certain frequency and we have to be accurate and send the correct clock pulse at the right time so if you had to start printing things to the serial so you can see here I commented it out this is just for debugging it, it will work but once I enable serial the, the whole uh, cycle goes out of sync and um, the actual console behaves um, erratically so it will pause it'll jump the character will jump so say you're playing um, Super Mario it will run back and forth up and down it will pause and it will just not work properly the moment you take out the serial print and you uncomment it it actually works perfectly fine um, I will also add that it's not 100% perfect. Sometimes you have to unplug and replug the controller for it to work. But once it starts working, it's, it, it, it runs fine. So let's, let's quickly try it out and, and see how it works. So let's try it out and see if it works. So I'm using a cheap NES Polystation type console, cheap Chinese family clone, and it, it seems to be working fine. I'll leave uh, some resources and extra videos and things where I've um, researched on how to do this in the um, description of this video. Thank you for watching, and if you like my video, um, perhaps you want to subscribe. Thanks. Cheers, everybody.